Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab, and today will be another video about Trunas. In this video specifically, we're gonna focus on the apps on the Trunas. What's the big difference from the Trunas scale for another revision? Because Trunas scale run Debian, and because they run Debian, they run Docker. And because they run Docker, you can have any application that's available in GitHub for install for you. And Trunas make it really easy, really simple, and that's we're gonna go step by step how you can install applications and what you need to have in mind in order to do it. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and let's understand a little bit more about it. As I told, in this video, we're gonna focus more a little bit for apps. So in order to install your apps first, we need to have our TrueNAS. So if you come here my screen, this is TrueNAS that I'm running, it's revision 24.10. In the time that I'm recording this video, I have another update, but I didn't update my system because I didn't need to do it. Also, this is a physical computer, what have i5 running, and I have, let's say, 16 gigabytes of RAM memory, what? It's more than enough for my size of pool. If I come here in the storage, I have only one storage or one hard drive. What's not ideal, but because it's only for a trial, I don't care so much about it. If it was not a trial, it's probably a running machine. I suggest you don't do it because basically it's not safe and uh, you can lose all your data. One thing before we start to do those apps on creating new apps, what we need to have in mind is some folders, if you want to give permissions, you need to properly configure it. So if you come in here in data set, as a standard, if you guys saw my previous video, I created those users, one user and one permission for each one. And here will be all my ACL configuration. What's the problem? Those apps don't have permission. Let's say that uh, in this user one, I will have all my media, and here inside this media will be all the media that I use for Plex. So once that I do it, make sure that you configure or add the app permission. So the same thing that I create for this app. If I come here in ACL and let's modify it, here in my screen, I create this permission based on restrictive and that others don't have access. But I create a mask that will have read and execute and I create add a user called app. What the apps will have permission to access it. If I wanted to add more, I can come here, users, and select others, users to have access for it. The more important for you is the app user to have permissions, read and write, principally if you want to make sure that they will copy data, or if you want to make look like a media system, they will paste data. And also, if you want to make look like Photo Prisma that they auto upload, you need to have permission for this. So make sure that all the folders or all the data sets that you create that any app will have access, they need to have permissions for it. Once that you created and configured those apps, then you can come here in the apps option. First thing that you need to do is configure your pool. So here in the configuration, in my case, I already select the pool home. Once that I do it, now, I don't need to do others configuration. What I need to do is check the apps. And if you look here, I have a big list of apps that I can do. These ideas for the apps will be really similar that if in the case that I'm using my Synology NAS. In my Synology NAS, I have all the apps. I can come here in containers or images and I can download the others. I can go to register and look for others containers, all of their doc containers, exactly the same. So once that open here, I have a list of uh, apps it's 129 apps already add as a official supported. And let's say if I want to install Cloudflare, so we'll put Cloudflare, it will appear here. I can select Cloudflare and put install. Once that I put install as a standard, they will come here, the name of the application, my token. This token is the same one that you wanna create when you create your Cloudflare tunnel. You can assign some arguments. In my case, don't need to do anything. My user ID will be here and if I want to do a host network or not, and if I have some storage configuration. In this case, for Cloudflare, you don't need to do any storage configuration. Only thing potentially you need to do is limitate how much CPU that you want to use. Two CPUs as um, this app will be more than enough. Potentially Cloudflare only need one. So in this way, once that you 
create here, only thing that you need to do is install. Once that's installed, the app is working. The same thing for, let's say, I want to install my Nextcloud. So we'll come here, Nextcloud, select this, install. Let's say that this one will be user and my pass will be user. Here will be the name of the host, if I want, the path, the password, user, the dataset password, user, how much gigabytes of uh, maximum limit of upload, what the memory run for my PHP, if I want to enable Chrome's for restart or do some specific configuration, here my network, if I want to do any kind of configuration network, here they will create automatically folders or automatically configuration for my next cloud. But let's say that I want to add extra pool specifically for access for, let's say, app folder. So we'll need to add a new pool. I need to select what kind of uh, information, let's say that I want a host path, and that I need to create, let's say, uh, home, home, then it will be uh, data, then it will be apps. And here I can create. Or if not, I can create a name. Let's say that I want to make this one as apps, as a name. I go here in my post, I come, come, and I select that it will have access for it. If I don't do this configuration, the Nextcloud will not have access for this specific route. So in the case that I go to install Plex, what I'm going to show in a second, you need to have it, otherwise Plex will not have access for your media. If you want to install Photo Prisma, you need to do a location where your media is located. And after this one, basically, you can limit resource and put install. This installation will keep a couple of minutes. Once that install the application, it will give this page that will process. Here will be all your workload, what the application is running, what it's running, what permissions that you have. Here will be your users, here will be your notes and everything. The same thing you can do if you come here to discover. And let's say that I want you to do Plex. You're going to do exactly the same step. You come here, Plex, put install and then you can pre-configure all the information, you can select your storage, but it will have one difference. If you come all the way down, now you have pass-through available. It means that now if you're running Plex and you have a GPU there, you can make sure that that Plex you're using for your GPU to transcode your data and will be fast. So one thing that's interesting is you always can enable the GPU. Only thing that you need to have in mind that if a virtual machine is running red with that specific GPU, you're not going to have access for it. They will not compartilate process or resource. You need to be dedicated for only one thing. Have in mind that all the time you need to add a new volume. You need to locate that host path as already exists in the system. Those paths need to be with the correct permissions. Otherwise, this Plex will not have access to it. So basically all those applications will follow that step. Also, you have the option to do a Cosmo application. Don't need to look only for this 129. You can come here in Cosmo application and you can add the application. You can look for the image that you want and other things. In the end, you can use a portainer. The same step of configuration that you use using your OpenMediaVal or using your uh, Synology NAS, you can do it in TrueNAS because they use Docker and they will use Debian as a base system. So in this way, we arrive at the end of the video. I hope that you guys like this video. If you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and see you next time.